So how long was it? How long did your training last? How long? Did the training last? Training? Uh, now then, 1940. January, January, February, March, April, May and June. May, six weeks. It was about the middle of April uh, when we boarded the train to go down to Southampton to get on the boats to go across to Cherbourg. And uh, that was uh, the old, uh, all the training, the rifle shooting, uh, that had finished then. So we just, uh, we were soldiers then. Mm -hmm. Did you feel ready to be sent abroad? Did we feel? Ready to be sent abroad. Uh, no, uh, no, you, you didn't feel ready. You, you waited until that time come, then you felt ready. I can't explain that. Uh, I, 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 I can't. I can't analyse that. It's a, a case of you were just all together, all lads all together, something like sort, and whether you're ready or not ready, it didn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. But when the time come, of course, then you were ready. Okay. That's when the Germans started pushing through. Right. But, but it didn't do much good because we all turned and ran for Dunkirk. Okay. Do you remember what it was like crossing? Coming back? No, no, going there. Going there, uh, no, to tell you the truth, I can't. That's it fine. was a big liner. Sorry. It was a big liner that took us there, I can remember, because the old regiment was on it. I suppose it might have been the Queen Mary or something. So I have no idea in the man it was. That's fine, that's fine. It was so, a big PO liner. But coming, going back from Dunkirk was on a, uh, a, a torpedo, torpedo boat, boat, French torpedo boat. And there was about 20 of us on, 10 laid down on one side and 10 laid down on the other side. We were told to lay down by the Frenchman. He couldn't speak English, but he beckoned us to lie down. Because if we'd have stood up, we'd have, we'd have got the force of the boat surge. And by jingo, that boat didn't have surge. It seemed only five minutes crossing the channel back to Britain. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't look back. We couldn't look back. We couldn't look anything. We couldn't look to see where the planes were. We just kept laid down on the deck. And so we landed in Folkestone. So when you uh, when you'd arrived in France, where were you sent then? Where was stationed? Yes. Uh, a place called Rennes, R E W N E S. Uh, so I said, man, it's Rouen in France or something like that. Uh, the French speak. And we was a pioneer battalion. We was building the railway until the Germans pushed through Belgium, and then of course we was bunged up to the front line then. So when, so, so when, when were you told that uh, the Germans had attacked? Sorry? When did you hear Germany had attacked? When did they? Hear Germany had attacked Belgium. Hear the Germans what? Had attacked Belgium. When, when did I hear that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't give you a date at all. Okay. I know, I, I'm absolutely lost as a guy. But uh, I, let's say Dunkirk was June. Uh, I would say it was some, somewhere in about the second week in May, something like that. So you'd only been there a couple of weeks. Then. Pardon? You'd only been there a couple of weeks then, when they attacked. Is it? You'd only been there a couple of weeks when you were sent out to the front. No, no. When the Germans started moving, we 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 moved up to the Albert Canal, mm -hmm. and we were stationed on one side of the canal. And then when they said the Germans were go, were, were, were coming or something, so advancing, instead of getting the orders to go forward. We got orders to mount in the wagons and go backwards. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether the officers couldn't face up to it or what, but uh, I probably didn't think we were capable of stopping the Germans, so we were boarded into trucks and we were sent back. Uh, for a little while, I think we travelled about a couple of miles down the road, when along came a couple of Dorniers, twin-engine German bombers, and they scattered us with machine gun in a bombing. And that's where I lost all the rest of the pals. And one thing or another, I went one road. So it was, we were scattered. And when I say scattered, that's it. You got away from... And then quite possibly, the, I don't know what happened, but quite possibly the rest of them got, got together and made their way to Dunkirk. Well, I was on my own and I, I had a brain gun. I, I was given a brain gun. And I can't think who it was, a problem possibly an officer, and I was told to lay down in the road and fire at anything that came down the road. 
And as, as, as I told you previously, when we had the interview, that when we, when it came to people coming down the road, there were still British troops. So of course I didn't fire on them. That was natural, wasn't it? And then the 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 the, the, the um, officer who was with these men was from the King's Royal Rifle Corps. And he said, what are you doing here? And I told him, he said, well, bring that gun and come on with us. And that was my start of was messing around with other soldiers at that time, you know. So what was that you were telling me a couple of days ago about when the, when, when, when the bombers attacked? And you said something about how it's not true that civilians were killed when they attacked. When they said what? When the civilians on the road got attacked. You said it's not true that they got killed. Uh, civilians? Yes. Uh, no, I, I didn't say it wasn't true that civilians uh, uh, didn't, uh, didn't get killed. I suppose some of them might have done. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, when it was all over, we didn't bother with that. We just got straight up the bank and then carried on walking down the road again, mm -hmm. hoping that they weren't going to attack again. Mm -hmm. But I saw a lot of animals that was badly shot up. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, the reason that I think a lot of civilians didn't shoot up because it uh, got killed or anything like that is because they could run as fast as us. As soon as the... Uh, you see, in those days, they went, they went to jet, all of a sudden coming, soaring out of the sky with a zoom. Yeah. There was none of that. They were propeller-driven airplanes so you could hear them. You could hear them droning up above you, you could say, oh, well, using the army term, you could say, oh, those bastards are coming here again. And then you used to watch them, and then, oh, yes, they've got their gun. And as they come down at 200 and less than 300 miles an hour or something, which is very fast, of course, but not for aeroplanes. Uh, as they come zooming down at that rate, uh, we chance to scatter. Mm -hmm. And so had the civilians. I, when I, what I was talking to you about uh, a couple of days ago about it, it was one soldier that was on television, uh, and it was, I think it was the 65th anniversary of Dunkirk, and he was exaggerating. And uh, I, I knew it was exaggerating because it wasn't true what he said, like things that he said about civilians and babies' arms and legs flying in all directions. I never saw anything like that. Okay. I didn't say that it didn't happen. All right. But I never saw anything like that. Okay. So, uh, so when, so when you were in the trucks and the planes attacked, did you all have to get out? It certainly got out <laughs> as quick as lightning. I mean, did you you, jump out yeah. of a truck, whether it's moving or not. Yeah. So did you? Uh, did you just abandon the vehicles after that, and did you have to walk? I had to walk. I had to walk because I, what happened to the vehicles, I don't know. What happened to the rest of the York and Lance, I don't know. I was on my own. Uh, apart from the fact that when this officer came from the King's Royal Rifle and he got us a, uh, into another area, I don't know how we got there or anything like that. I can't remember it in detail. We got to another area and it was a, a, like, like a small copse or wooded area mm -hmm. and we hid in there. And then he told us then that uh, uh, there's, there's only one way out of it, and he directed the the, the, the course that you should take to get out of it. And uh, uh, he, he said, uh, we can't all go at once. Mm -hmm. He said, if you set, set off in small parties, you have an advantage of uh, getting away. So we, we were in the second party, and we means me, Two more people from the York Langs and two lads from the artillery, the five of us. So then it was walk all the way. Just walk all the way to Dunkirk, was it? Yeah, yeah, but there were stoppages and stuff mm -hmm. on the way there. But uh, that was it. How far was that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That, now, that's, that's something that's nattered me. What did I do with it? Did we do it in a day? Did we get down to sleep anyway? I believe we did get down to sleep when we came to this Royal Artillery base and uh, there were some soldiers messing around there, you know, uh, uh, and then the officer gave us some food. Now, that might have been nightfall, but I don't know. That's fine. Okay. But I don't know for the following day or possibly the same day 
there was a windmill there in in this particular area, but, uh, you know, possibly a farmstead or something. So this windmill was there. Uh, adventurous me, I went um, up to the top of the windmill and I'm looking around and lo and behold, three or four hundred yards down the meadow there, there was some Germans running across the meadow with a heavy machine gun. That, that's two of them with a the machine gun and one with a case of ammunition running across the road. So I went straight downstairs, told the officer, and I thought he'd give us the orders to get up there and sort them out, but no. <laughs> We boarded their trucks and went further down the road again. And then we came to a village and it was so bombed, it was impossible for the trucks to drive through. So we dismounted there and that was that left us five on our own. And what happened to all the rest of the KRRs and the other fellas, I had no idea, the man in moment. But as I walked across, as, um, as I left that place and we were walking across, um, there was a big ditch. And I was absolutely amazed at the equipment that was in that ditch. There was a beautiful big howitzer cannon. It, it, it must have had a 7.2 board or something like that. And it was laid on its side. There was a tank laid on its side. And there was a naffy wagon laid on its side with the food in it. Because I got a big tray of chocolates out of it. But uh, it, it, it was amazing how the British Army really fled and ran away. It was amazing. Do you think France let Britain down? No, never fired a shot. So, so you... That's all I saw the Germans, were those three running across the meadow with, with that heavy machine gun and never saw another German since. So you were ordered to retreat then? Sorry? You were ordered to retreat then? I you were you were all ordered to pull back then. I was I was getting no orders at all. I was going down the road and oh, it was uh, when we left. Uh, when we left this copse, this officer said uh, something about Dunkirk. But, you know that's that's where that's where you have to act for something like that. Oh, was it when the lighthouse jump? No, it was, it, was a, it was when we left the lighthouse and we came to this village, it was bombed. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, when we got out, because the trucks were going no further, they said, well, make your, uh, make your own way to Dunkirk. And probably set off with his man and several of us set off in small groups. And us five kept together right to the edge of Dunkirk. And I lost the Italian man. They, they went somewhere else at that time, I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> and then when we landed on the beach at Dunkirk, there was a captain and he was sat on the low wall and he said, oh, oh, where are you, where are you from, and what, all this, that and the other. And then he said, you better get down and join the doings. But as he said that, the Stukas came over, dive bombing. Of course, uh, I, made, I, made jump, I made the jump for a whole a, a crater that had already been there. I jumped in this crater, and I don't know where Harry Crab or Corporal Ascus went to, those were the two York and Langs. And I don't know where, where, which way they ran, but when it was over and I got out, I was on my, I was on my own then for the rest of the time I, stayed, I was at Dunkirk and the rest of the time getting on the boat, uh, on the torpedo boat to come okay. back to England. All right, just going back a bit, what was, the, what was that time when you said you, you, were high, you were trying to cross a canal and some Germans walked past? The, that was going back to the cops again. Yes. Where we was hiding in there. The Germans didn't walk out. There was the, the canal bank, and there was a corner like that, a corner like that. Yeah. And I was in a canal here, and I and I was my, my the others had gone ahead. And it was my turn to get out when I saw these two Germans walking around. So I shrunk back in the water, and I watched them going around. And then they must have heard some commotion from the wood behind, so they started firing automatic guns in there and shouting German stuff about come out or something like that, you know, and uh, that, that, was, that was that. As soon as they passed by and went further on, as soon as they got out of sight, I was straight out that canal like a shot in case there were any more, but uh, I, I managed to get to the other side in the edge road where they then crawled down to the corner where there was a wall and found the rest of the fellas uh, down there. So, so from that point on, you just carried on to Dunkirk? And that was where we carried on, yeah. yeah. Carried on down the railway banking. Wasn't, 
I think you said something the other day about you were one of only two people who could swim out of the people you were with. Oh, well, well, I could swim. I was a good swimmer because I was always in the swimming bath when I was a kid. I, I loved swimming. And uh, Corporal Asko could swim. So he went across the other side and I stopped at his side and I got hold of one fella and I went to half strangled him, you know, paddling as fast as I could because I didn't know anything about life saving. You know, turning him around, putting your arms under him, and what do you do now with life saving? And I might say, get him to the middle, and then Asquith would get him from me and uh, up, up the bank and they'd go. And um, that's how the five of us got across, apart from me. Um, I was the last one. 